Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 649. Protein is your body's vital building block. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. We are going to talk today about protein, protein in your diet, which makes protein in your body and the and how it uh, <clears throat> is metabolized into different parts of your body. So um, when I tell my patients, you need to be on a high-protein diet because you're on testosterone. And because even though you're over 40, over 50, you still need a lot of protein in your diet to build muscle because on testosterone, we continue to build muscle, replace muscle, make our muscles strong and active. And our muscles are made of protein. And, and, and the building blocks of a protein are amino acids. So the amino acids that come from animal proteins like eggs, meat, cheese, um, any, anything that comes from an, an animal has some protein in it. And so when we eat proteins from animals, we get the building blocks for our muscles. So I'm always talking to patients about how important it is for them to keep a lot of protein in their diet. Sadly, most of us have slipped into uh, comfort eating. A comfort eating means junk food, and which is almost always carbohydrates. So if you can put your wrap your brain around this. Carbohydrates are for activity. Your carbohydrates are for action. They're for running. They're for working out. They're for cleaning the house. They're for doing the lawn. They're for the energy you need for those activities. But they do co provide comfort and kind of a, it's almost like a drug to many of us. And it, because of that emotional tie we have to it, we eat too many carbohydrates, and in doing so, we eat too many calories with carbohydrates in it and not enough protein. So I would like you to think about what you do when you go home and you're hungry and what you get out of the cabinet or what you get out of the refrigerator and what you snack on, and I would be willing to bet it's not protein. It's probably carbohydrate, and all you're going to do is work on paperwork at night or help your kids with homework or you're going to read a book or watch television, you're not going to be going out and doing anything. So because of that, we substitute what we should be eating, protein, with carbohydrate, and then we just sit around and make fat. So if you can have that picture of what you're eating turning into fat because you're not out exercising, then, then I want you to do that because that will help you choose your foods better. So... Protein, just think about what protein makes in your body. So in a, in a baby who's, who's being de uh, developed in utero, um, the very beginning of our bodies, protein is making our muscles. Protein is making our skin, our connective tissue, which means our ligaments and our cartilage and the connective tissue underneath our skin and our skin, our hair, <laughs> our nails, our bones, all of these things are made out of protein. Now, bones have to do with calcium, but protein carries calcium around in the body and it takes it to the bone and delivers it. So you need protein not as a subs or not as a building block for that, but as a delivering agent to your bones. So it is a major component of everything we view as our skeletal body or our our beauty body, our skin and our hair. Um, it is very important for our brains. And when I, when I talk to people about um, why I ate what I ate when I was pregnant, I wanted to have my daughter ha to have the biggest brain and the smartest brain that she could possibly have. And 
Every day at lunch, I ate Braunschweiger. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's liver sausage. <laughs> it actually tastes pretty good. And I had that every single day until the very end before I delivered to help her make the best brain she could because your brain is fat and your brain has protein as well. So those things, protein is the, the meat part of the liver sandwich or the liver sausage. And then there's also a fat component. And your brain needs fat because it's made mostly of fat. So I provided both things, both her body skeletal building blocks, and I provided the fat she needed for her very brilliant brain, which did turn out to be so. So, um, but when I talk about protein and people just think meat, then oh, I don't like meat or I don't like to eat chicken or I don't like the texture of meat. Well, I, I get that, but you can, ha you can substitute with milk products. You can substitute with um, <clears throat> whey protein in, sh in protein shakes. You can substitute with pea protein in shakes for people who don't eat meat or um, animal products. You can substitute with eggs. You can substitute with fish. All seafood, even shrimp, all the things that we love um, are actually very heavy laden in protein. Lamb, um, beans have protein for building blocks as well, and chicken. The only um, bean that is actually has all of the components for muscle tissue or for building, uh, they call it basically a complete, uh, a complete protein. It has all of the amino acids in it. It's from quinoa. And quinoa is something you would have within a salad. Some uh, vegans eat quinoa every day to get their protein. So it is a very good protein source for people who aren't going to eat uh, animal products. But if you're not as concerned about how your body is built or how your body works physically and you're more concerned about how it works chemically, then you should consider the fact that um, all your hormones are basically proteins. They're amino acid hormones mostly. Some of them are are made of um, steroids, which are lipids. But, but most of your hormones are made out of amino acids. The hormone that goes from your brain to your ovary to tell your ovary to make testosterone and estrogen is an amino acid. It's made out of amino acids. So, and then everything in your body, every activity of your body, rebuilding tissue, making connections between neurons, telling your body to grow or to not grow or to, or to increase its metabolism. All of those things work with enzymes. Enzymes are made out of a basic amino acid proteins. And we also have enzymes made out of vitamins. For those of you who just thought of that and were going to write me. Um, our immune globulins, our immune globulins are made out of proteins. Um, breast milk. Uh, if you ever thought about that, is all made out of protein and and water, of course. And so if you think about all the things proteins do, to have less than 20% of your diet be protein isn't enough. And if you're not an active athlete, if you're not, if you don't have a physically active job, then you should be cutting back on your carbs and eat much more protein. And I've given you almost all the foods that they're that contain proteins that you can eat. And lots of good reasons why you should eat protein. So how much protein do you need? Well, for people who aren't pregnant, for people who are, um, <clears throat> who are adults and have testosterone, they can, we can, because I have testosterone even though I am not under 40, but I have my testosterone. So I build muscle when I work out, I make muscle. The day after I work out, I, my muscle has been broken down over the 24 hours between when I worked out and the next day, and then I start building muscle. So once again, that's why we don't work the same part of our body every single day if we work out with weights. We want to build muscle, so we work every other day to build muscle. In any case, if you are building muscle, then... Um, for example, if you say you weigh um, 140 pounds, 
then 70 grams of protein would be the minimum that you should have for that day just to maintain your muscle mass. If you are trying to gain muscle, if you're working with weights, if you are trying to build bone, if you're trying to, and, and that comes from building muscle because the tension on the bone helps it build. Um, if you want to have great hair, if you want, you should have more than half your weight in grams of protein. And so bodybuilders say that you should eat your entire weight in grams of protein. But honestly, that would be a little tough and it may be hard on your, on your kidneys. So somewhere between half of your weight in grams of protein and your weight in grams of protein is probably your goal for gaining muscle mass. So that would be my, um, my recommendation. And if you feel like you can't get that, there are a lot of high protein um, bars that you can eat. Just watch that they don't have too many carbs. And there are a lot of high protein shakes made out of either whey or, or out of, um, I would not advise soy because soy has a lot of phytoestrogens in it that counteract a lot of the effectiveness of testosterone. So I would say that whey and uh, pea protein are your best sources. Milk protein are your best sources. And they can, you can get 30 grams of protein in those and they can up your amount of protein for your day. So if you just make a habit of eating those things for snacks or in between your meals, you can actually pump up your um, protein intake. And that is really good for your body. More than your weight in grams of protein is probably really hard, is generally really hard on your kidneys, and I would not advise it. So um, when we look at the animal products that we can use, we can have meat, we can have cheese, we can have eggs. Many of us have um, milk products all day long in different forms, like yogurt. If you're allergic to milk, then that's a little problematic, but you can eat um, lots of forms of beans and peas that have protein in them. So if you want to be a somebody who is aging well and who has replaced their testosterone, so they are making muscles, so you are still strong, you, are, you still have stamina, you still are able to lift the things you could lift when you were 30, even when you're 70, then you need to have enough protein to actually supply, supply what you need to replace the muscles when you exercise that are broken down. You need to replace those muscles with something that is made out of these amino acids and has to be in your blood and you have to be able to go to the go to the muscle and make more muscle so that you don't lose muscle as you age. One of the things that is so sad about aging is if we don't have our testosterone and if we don't use weights and if we don't stay active, plus we don't eat enough protein, we then lose our muscle and then we end up shrinking and we end up leaning over and our bones get thinner because our muscles are weak and we can't live on our own. That's the outcome. And that's the outcome I don't want to have for my patients. I want my patients to be, I want all of you to be able to be healthy and be productive and take care of yourself all the way through your life so that you don't have to depend on your children or your siblings or God forbid your parents. So, uh, so you have to take care of yourself. And in doing so, you have to actually look at your diet and plan ahead, not being a reactionary, being a planner. One of the other things that you can do for, for protein intake that may be really easy because it'll be a snack is just eating some kind of nuts. Nuts have a lot of protein and they have good fats in them and they have selenium and they have uh, other trace minerals that are really good for you. So snack, you can snack on nuts and then just in that, bring your protein um, quotient up to high enough to replace the muscles that you're breaking down as you have any kind of activity. So not all proteins are alike. Not all are, are, are equivalent. Probably the highest protein that you could have would be a red meat protein for building muscle. But you can have complete proteins with 
all the amino acids in like in quinoa. And you'd have to eat a lot of it and a lot of beans. But these proteins all have to come into your body every single day. You can't just eat protein one time a day. I mean, once, once a week, one day a week. Some of my patients go, yeah, well, what if I eat a turkey sandwich twice a week? Well, that's just not, that's not enough. You have to then look at your eggs and your milk, con your milk products and see if you are getting enough protein. And if you're not, then you can either increase that in your diet, decrease your carbs so that your calories don't go crazy, but uh, you'll feel fuller with protein than you will with carbohydrate and you won't be hungry as soon. So it does do other things for your metabolism because it does keep you full. So take my advice. Now you know how important protein is. Don't go on a low protein diet. and That would be something unconsciously we, we do when we eat too many carbs. So go on a healthy, whole food protein diet. And I always recommend eating uh, animal products. Animals, I think, were made for us to, um, to eat. We're omnivores. And uh, if we weren't, my uh, COO, Joe Ballman, told me that we wouldn't have incisors here if we, didn't, we weren't made to eat meat. We would just have molars, just like cows, because cows just eat grass. So that's how you know you were made to eat meat. And, that, and hopefully, I haven't lost a lot of listeners there. So please see if you can organize your diet, organize your grocery list, Limit the number of processed foods, limit the number of carbohydrates that you bring home, and then that will be one step closer to getting enough protein every day and limiting your carbohydrate intake. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth.